Hi there, everybody. My name is Jeremy Siskind. Uh, I'm the author of Playing Solo Jazz Piano. I'm the author of Jazz Piano Fundamentals Book One. And you guessed it, I'm the author of Jazz Piano Fundamentals Book Two. Um, today's video uh, is a little bit, um, I'm not exactly sure where it's gonna go. I'm gonna be honest, I wanna work out something with you guys in front of the camera. Um, I've been thinking a lot about pentatonic scales lately. So I want to tell you a little bit about pentatonic scales, their importance, and then I'm asking this question of is a melodic minor pentatonic scale useful? Um, I have a strong hypothesis that it is, but I want to run those ideas by you and see your response. Um, so that's what we're going to do today. We're going to do a small uh, lecture about pentatonic scales and then get into kind of this common other type of pentatonic scale. So let's see where it goes. Thanks for going on the journey with me. All right, pentatonic scale, obviously, that means five notes. One of the most important scales throughout musical styles, really everything but I think class, like Western classical music, Western classical music does not care very much for the pentatonic scale, but so much folk music, so much pop music um, is, based upon the pentatonic scale. And we generally think about there being two pentatonic scales or a major and a minor version of the pentatonic scale. And I say it that way because relative major and minor pentatonic scales are going to use the same notes. So if you want to memorize formulas, Just a second, I've learned not to write and talk at the same time. The formula for a major pentatonic is one, two, three, five, six. And the formula for a minor pentatonic is one, three, four, five, seven. And so that's going to be a, um, you know, a lowered seven and a lowered third compared to the major scale. Like compared to A major scale, you're gonna flat the third and the seventh for the minor pentatonic. So these two have the same pitches, which means that Really kind of at the end of the day, there's only one pentatonic scale, right? Um, we could just start at different places, get slightly different results. If you need to, if you'd like to hear how these scales sound, here's the major. If you're, you know, a fan of oldies and you know My Girl, one way to think about the pentatonic scale is that opening of My Girl. Um, the minor sounds like this. I think a lot of people associate this with Asian folk music. <laughs> if you put the pedal down and you start improvising with the minor pentatonic scale, you can make something that sounds like, you know, generic Asian folk music. I mean, no disrespect to those cultures. I know they have much more complex and interesting folk music than that. But yes, the stereotypical folk music uh, is based upon that pentatonic scale. Among the many reasons why the pentatonic scale is important is that if we add in a note between the fourth and the fifth of that minor pentatonic scale, we get the blues scale. So when people ask me why the blues scale works, despite the fact that it's such an odd scale, one of the reasons that I give is that it's basically the pentatonic scale. Another concept to think about, and I think I've mentioned this on the channel before, regarding the pentatonic scale, is that it's essentially this scale, I think I'm going to just start in the bass clef, that s includes notes stacked in fifths. So C, D, oops, C, G, D, A, E, right? I'm stacking perfect fifths, and that creates all five notes of the pentatonic scale. And fifths are important because other than octaves, in terms of the, um, oh no, I'm blinking on the term. Uh, in terms of the acoustical um, cycles, it's the purest interval. So we're essentially stacking all of the notes from the purest intervals. I can say according to the harmonic series, the overtone series was the word I'm looking for, right? So just mathematically, these are like the purest five notes you can get. And 
in that sense, I think it's not a coincidence that the pentatonic scale leaves out the fourth and the seventh of the major scale. And those are the two notes that, you know, cause some dissonance, cause some rubs, because in the major scale, those are the places where we have half steps, right? C, D, E to F is a half step. G, A, B to C is a half step. So um, oftentimes, you know, if we're improvising, we'd want to resolve the fourth. We'd want to resolve the seventh. So we can use the pentatonic scale quite a lot melodically, but what I want to focus on right now is voicings. In jazz, it's really great to learn pentatonic voicings. And the way that these voicings work is actually very simple conceptually. We're taking the pentatonic scale and we're going to make five note voicings. So we're going to use every single note of the pentatonic scale. And we're going to do that by skipping every other note of the scale, by basically taking every odd number note. And what's fun about this is that we can do it starting on each different note of the pentatonic scale. And we're going to get five very useful results. they're all going to have slightly different intervals because the pentatonic scale is a kind of lumpy scale. Oh, I got one more. All right, so those are pentatonic voicings using C pentatonic, C major pentatonic. We'd get the same set of voicings, starting in a different place technically, if we used A minor pentatonic. So I'm going to write here C major slash A minor. And these sound so nice, they're so easy to move between. They're so just like pleasing to move between that uh, they're really useful voicings. And even though these are using the C major and A minor scale, uh, pentatonic scale, that doesn't mean that we're limited to using them in C major and in A minor. For example, these voicings would sound really beautiful in F on an F major 7. B flat major seven sharp eleven. You know we would have the third, the seventh, the ninth, the sharp eleventh, the thirteenth. Right, it's really nice. Or what about a G sus? or even a D sus, right? We can find all these different scales, all these different chords. And in fact, I think I've taught this before on the channel, but there's this formula that I use. Well, let me back up. Each major mode contains within it three pentatonic scales, the notes of three pentatonic scales. So if I'm taking C major, change my spacing. We have, of course, you know, we'll have C major pentatonic. But we also have F pentatonic. F, G, A, C, D. And G pentatonic. Uh, I guess I'll just mark those with green. G, A, B, D, E. So if you can, if this makes sense to you, good for you. <laughs> uh, but right, C major pentatonic, C, D, E, G, A, F major pentatonic, F, G, A, C, D, and then G major pentatonic, G, A, B, D, E. So if you can figure out what mode the chord is derived from, you can always take the one, four, and five of that original major scale and use those pentatonic scales. Let me say that a different way. If you can find the parent scale, the major scale, upon which the mode is based. So for instance, for G Mixolydian, the parent scale would be C major. For 
B flat Lydian parent scale would be F major. It's going to be the one, four, and five of that original parent scale that are going to work. So this is great because it means that for you know for basically anything where you have a major mode, you can use pentatonic voicings. Pretty cool. Now we do have a bit of a problem with dominant chords where it makes it really hard to use pentatonic voicings. So you know I told you for G seven our parent scale would be C major. So that means we could use the C, F, and G pentatonics. And the G pentatonic is going to sound pretty okay. But we have this problem that what defines a dominant chord is a tritone. Right, tritone's the interval between, for instance, here, B and F. And pentatonic scales, they're so pure with all these fifth intervals, they do not contain a tritone. And so, you know, there's certain things that we can do. For instance, it's kind of nice to mix F pentatonic and G pentatonic. So I'm going to take some voicings here, I'll show you, from F pentatonic, like that and some voicings from G pentatonic. This is one possible solution because here we hear the F that's part of that tritone. In this one, we hear the B that's part of that tritone. So to hear it, it still doesn't sound too precisely like G7 to me. So enter our melodic minor pentatonic. I don't read a lot of this about this in jazz theory books. I don't read a lot of jazz theory books, so maybe that's on me. <laughs> um, but basically what I'm doing here is I'm taking the major pentatonic and flatting the third. And at least I'm calling this, and I, I assume I'm not the first one calling the C melodic minor pentatonic. Now, here's the negative, right? The pentatonic is cool because of the reasons I outlined at the beginning. It's this stack of fifths. It doesn't contain the dissonant intervals. It's just a step away from the blues scale, right? That's no longer true about this C melodic minor pentatonic. But I think the cool thing is that we can stack up these notes and get some, I think, good sounding voicings. So if I'm finding melodic minor pentatonic voicings, <coughs> excuse me, I'm gonna do the same process as for my major pentatonics. I'm going to be stacking every other note until I get to five notes. They should all be different notes each time, otherwise you did something incorrect. You messed up. And now we get this. It's very useful hand positions, I think, even if it's not a pentatonic scale. never practiced pentatonic voicings, I think they're really good at helping to train you to not double because you're always going to find interlocking shapes that don't share any notes. So now the question is, what chords could this go with? And I think it's kind of useful to think about your melodic minor scale. So C minor 6, probably C minor major 7 it would sound pretty good with. C minor 6 is equivalent to an A half diminished, right? Those have the same notes, just in a different order. But the one that is really interesting to me is F7, or it's triton substitution B7, right? If we think of F7, we have the seventh and the third, right? Our two super important notes. And then we have the 13th, the ninth, and the fifth. So, wow, that's really useful. So really youthful too. <laughs> and if 
we think about the Tritone Sub B7, I think it's even more youthful. I mean, useful. Uh, I'm trying to be funny. I don't think it's working. It's really useful. So it's got the sharp five. It's got the sharp nine. It's got the seven. It's got the third. It's got the flat nine. So. these kinds of voicings, and I, I consider this in the class of modal voicings, which are a type of voicing where you take a scale and then you can start that scale in different places, they're, they're not all equal. There are going to be some that feel more tense. So to me, the middle voicing there, having the third and seven, is going to be the nicest for the dominant chords. Whereas some others, for instance, having G and C on bottom, it doesn't feel very restful to me. It feels like it wants to move somewhere. So just because you can use all of them, don't shut off your ear. Keep listening for which ones sound really restful and which ones feel like they need to move to a more restful place. So I think that these voicings are pretty useful. I'll give you a couple more chords. You know, we could use this with a D sus flat nine. It in terms of chords that I could think of using this with for the moment. I'm sure I'll think of something as soon as the video stops. So that's my argument that we should spend a little bit more time with this pentatonic melodic minor or melodic minor pentatonic. I think it would be great to have a pentatonic uh, scale that we could use on dominance and alter dominance. Thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed that, you'll probably like my books. And if you didn't like that, you will love my books. Uh, playing solo jazz piano, jazz piano fundamentals, books one and two. Um, if you uh, watch that whole thing, comment uh, with uh, Smokey the Bear. I don't know. That's the first thing I thought of. See you later, everybody. <laughs>